G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Well, I guess the big story at the moment is the SEC is filing a lawsuit against Ripple. So I really, you know, was thinking that this would just go away uh, and unfortunately it hasn't. And look, the XR price is absolutely getting hammered at the moment. Absolutely hammered. Uh, and I wouldn't blame people for selling. Me, I'm just too stubborn. Uh, a little bit like uh, digital asset news. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just not selling. I'm simply going to hold on to it and ride it to zero. Uh, I don't care. I honestly think this will get settled somewhere along the way uh, and then XRP will find its way back and do extremely well. It's just that may not happen in the near future. That literally could take years, unfortunately. Or look, maybe, uh, you know, Ripple decide to you know make an agreement and pay out a, a fine and it'll be a fairly big fine but you know either way i don't think uh, xrp is simply going to die uh, and there's a lot of stuff on twitter at the moment you know there's a lot of xrp hate there has been for a very very long time they say it's too centralized and it's a you know it's a crap coin and you know it's a banker's coin and this and that and blah 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 look I get it and I understand where they're coming from. I disagree though. I think uh, it is a great tool and I think for international settlements, I think it's a great coin. I don't like that Ripple owns so much. I do think they need to decentralize a whole lot more. Uh, you know, maybe they can gift a substantial amount to the IMF or something like that or yeah, I'm not sure how they're gonna work it out. But what I wanna say is, you know, if you're an XRP hater, I get it. I understand. I really do. I invested in it anyway. And again, I'll ride mine to zero. I just don't care. That's the way I am. I, I believe in XRP. I think at some stage this will get sorted. It may take years uh, and eventually XRP will shoot back up in price. A and look, something could happen in the very near future that suddenly turns it all around. I don't think that's the case. But it is possible, so I'm just holding on to my XRP. I'm not selling. I'm quite sure that, you know, if everyone who's dumping XRP, they're probably going to come out and say they're going to do another snapshot <laughs> for the Flare network. And, uh, you know, if you're not still holding XRP uh, when the Flare stuff comes out, you don't get it or something like that. It wouldn't surprise me if something like that happens. So I'm simply holding. I'm not sure if they can do that legally or not. I've, I've got no idea. But... I just, I wouldn't be surprised if something like that happens. But what I want to say is this, love or hate XRP, this is an attack on crypto in general, period. They've done it to other cryptocurrencies, you know, EOS and, oh God, what was it? Uh, Enigma, uh, a number of other cryptocurrencies and they had to pay fines. And look, in all fairness, the fines weren't that big considering the amount of money they made. But this is still an attack on crypto and this could lead to bigger things. It could set a precedent and all of a sudden, you know, there's further attacks on cryptocurrencies. Cryptocurrencies are still very, very small in the grand scheme of things. As they get bigger and they start, start to, you know, particularly Bitcoin and it knocks out the number one currency in the world, the US dollar, you can believe that they're going to start to come for it. They're going to get worried. There's something out there that they can't control, they can't manipulate, uh, and they may well then come after Bitcoin. So I am really worried about this. If it's just that they end up having to pay a fine and then it goes away, you know, I guess so be it. But again, it's still, you know, I'm concerned. I don't know how else to put it. I'm just, I'm concerned that this will be the start of something that snowballs and gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And now look, I know they've said, X, uh, sorry, Ethereum's not a, a security. Bitcoin's not a security. Litecoin's not a security. Uh, I think Ethereum Classic's not a security and all the rest of it. That doesn't mean that they can't change their mind later. And particularly if they, uh, you know, get some obscene ruling against XRP here. You know, I think XRP has its place. I think it's... Uh, a great way to transfer it's super quick the fees are really low again i think xrp slash ripple are going to have to possibly gift a lot of their holdings away to you know appease regulators and all the rest of it but again they've still got so much of it i don't think that would you know be such a bad thing and they've made so much money and they still have a lot of money so you know we'll have to wait and see where this space goes but again if you're just an xrp hater 
just be careful that this isn't the start of something else where they start to attack the rest of cryptocurrencies. You know, again, I understand people's feelings about XRP, but we should be sticking together. But in all fairness, Brad Garling has said some things, you know, about uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum to make XRP not sound as bad that were kind of pretty silly. They were silly things for him to post saying that, you know, they're owned by the Chinese and, um, you know, XRP is not as bad as them, you know, trying to bring others down. It's like someone who's drowning, you know. When you're drowning, you pull others down to try and keep above your head above water and that's, you know, it's what someone who's, you know, panicking does and I'm sure Brad's trying to remain calm but he would be in a little bit of a panic. But look, to those XRP holders and people who believe in XRP, I do think this will get sorted in the future. XRP is not going broke. Brad Garlinghouse isn't going to jail. Chris Larson's not going to jail. Ripple won't suddenly, you know, become defunct and all the rest of it. They'll have to pay a very large fine. Uh, can, but again, it won't be that large considering how much money they've made. Uh, and yeah, I think XRP will still play a role in the future. But look, I could be wrong. And, and I hope I'm, I'm not wrong about that. Uh, you know, for whatever reason, something extraordinary could come out and they just completely crush it. But again, I don't think that can happen. And it's been said that if Ripple were to, you know, go out of business, XRP would still run. It's, you know, it's got other nodes on it. Uh, you know, it is a sort of decentralized network. The network itself uh, is decentralized around uh, XRP. Just the company Ripple is very centralized. Time will tell. I'm not going to spend too much more time. Well, I'm not going to spend any more time on that because it's all over there if you haven't heard about it yet. Uh, you know, just get on Twitter and YouTube. Everyone's talking about it. But again, concerned. All right, here's the next one. So Mark Zuckerberg has another answer to Bitcoin. So he says, now this was an interesting read. Last year's backlash against Facebook Inc.'s planned digital currency Libra would have been most CEOs worst nightmare. Governments and regulators linked arms to repel a perceived threat to monetary sovereignty, financial stability and data privacy. Again, this uh, monetary sovereignty is what makes me think that, you know, they could still go after Bitcoin and Ethereum in the future, uh, financial stability and all that. So again, you know, won't spend any more time on it, but that's what I'm concerned about. The more Mark Zuckerberg tried to reassure politicians by talking up financial inclusion and innovation, the more he came across like a tobacco boss denying cigarettes are addictive. He even acknowledged the problem. I get that I'm not uh, the ideal messenger for this. That has uh, deterred him. Given Zuckerberg's tendency to issue half-hearted apologies before going back to breaking things, it's not surprising that he's gearing up for a second attempt to launch Libra next year. There have been a few changes. Libra is now called Diem, as in Carpe Diem. And its membership council is headed by Stuart Levy, whose stints at the US Treasury and HSB Holdings uh, make him a blend of beltway and banking. There's no more talk of rewards for members in the form of investment tokens. Technically, Facebook is one of DM's 27 members and DM says it's an independent organization. Facebook will be providing an electronic wallet alongside it, but this project was created and funded by Mark Zuckerberg's company and the association's six uh, seat board, mem board includes David Marcus, head of Facebook's cryptocurrency efforts. The biggest new concession to regulators is that Facebook will no longer create a single global currency, rather than a craft of synthetic Libra, rather than craft a synthetic Libra out of a basket of euros, dollars, and yen, much like the International Monetary Fund's special drawing rights. This is what makes me think uh, they probably still will restrict it. DM will be made up of multi, uh, multiple single currency stablecoins pegged to each one. Converting a dollar or euro into a, a digital DM would be a one-to-one -one transaction with little chance of wild Bitcoin level volatility or an overnight disruption of fiat currencies. Facebook is even proposing that central banks one day use the DM blockchain to issue digital currencies, similar to China's testing of a digital one. This plea for legitimacy suggests Facebook is leaning more toward the kind of electronic cash offered by PayPal Holdings Inc. or Alibaba Group Holding Limited than the revolutionary crypto dreams of Bitcoiners. A digital dollar that's transferable anywhere and at any time could in theory be a draw for consumers. Even if in practice uh, it's regulation rather than technology, that's the cause of transaction slowness. 
Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, Tiunis Brosens, a senior uh, economist at ING, reckons DM may end up like a plain vanilla e-money wallet. Blockchain expert David Gerard has called it PayPal, but it's Facebook. <laughs> yeah, so obviously they're still trying to push forward with it. Uh, I'm sure at some stage they're going to be able to have some kind of currency out. But yeah, I think they're really going to struggle to do the things that they really want to. And look, Facebook's big enough. We don't want them in control of money. Uh, they're already in control of all our data and personal stuff and all the rest of it and social media. Them controlling money is not a good idea uh, in my eyes. Now, we talked about Skybridge before. So Anthony uh, Scaramucci's Skybridge hedge fund just invested $25 million in a Bitcoin fund as it sees an avalanche of institutional investors buying crypto for 2021. So again... They're still coming. This is still early. I, I talked about it in my uh, vlog yesterday that you know we're not even near the high end at the moment. This is the early institutions getting in. The all the other institutions are still yet to come. They're 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 a long way off. It won't be till Bitcoin gets to fifty thousand, basically a hundred thousand, that they're going to start to pile in. This is just the very early adopters, and then retail is still yet to come. They will come. You know, later on in the year, I mean, there's some retail here now. Don't get me wrong; you're part of retail, no doubt, as am as am I. But we again will be considered, you know, the early adopters, not the earliest, not like the OGs back in 2010 through the 2013 and 15, but you know, the sort of 2017 beyond crowd who were still early. Now. Crypto trading bots, so they are a thing now. Trading bots have been used in other industries, but now they're here, and this uh, is really, uh, I don't like it. Uh, you know, I understand what trading bots are for, but they will make it really hard for the average user uh, to be able to sort of beat the system, but that's just the way it goes. That's part of moving into mainstream. Trading bots are not new. They were first established in Forex trading in the early 2000s, but the concept of automated trading goes as far back as the 1950s when Richard uh, Don Chien introduced a set of rules to buy and sell funds. Automated trading systems like bots now manage high volumes of assets all around the globe with roughly 70 to 85, 75 to 80 percent of all stocks being traded via bots. Most recently, as institutional financial companies have entered the crypto markets, they have bought these trading bots with them, which have been adopted and applied to cryptocurrencies, and we're now starting to see bots made available for retail participants too. So, yep, crypto trading bots are here. Look, they've been uh, around for a little while, and there were people, you know, you know, sort of selling uh, bots a while ago, but I don't know how well they worked and if they were legit ones, but... Yeah, it seems the big boys have now bought them across and that does mean that things are going to get a whole lot harder uh, in the crypto space for the average Joe to try and do, you know, execute uh, good trades because bots can, you know, really wreck uh, people. Hence why I don't trade uh, very often. Again, I do some swing trading here and there, but I'm more an investor. All right, last but not least. So Nicholas Merton, a.k.a. Derp Data Dash, he's talking about an alt cycle, cycle coming. And I do think there's one coming soon as well. But here's uh, some of the things he said, and I agree. Merton emphasizes that Litecoin Bitcoin is trading near critical support at around 0.004, where it pumped 3 to 5x based on its horse... Her, oh, God, excuse me. Historical price action. So even though the dollar value of... Uh, Litecoin has been going up and doing quite well. It, it's where it's trading against Bitcoin. It's sitting at a key level where it usually pumps from here. So it will go up three to five x in comparison to Bitcoin. Not in not in well not will but could go up three to five x in comparison to Bitcoin. So your dollar value could be who knows what. He's also keeping a close watch on the Ethereum to Bitcoin, which he says is also trading at key support levels. And he goes on to say, in this case, what we got are discount opportunities where altcoins are really cheap right now. This is a game where you see capital cycle in and out of different markets within the crypto space. So again, as I said, it usually starts in Bitcoin. Once Bitcoin levels off, it goes to your large altcoins. 
uh, large cap altcoins, then mid cap altcoins, then low cap altcoins, and then it just starts back over, goes back to Bitcoin. Now there are corrections in there, but that's the way people, uh, uh, yeah, trade this market. And if you can, you know, get your head around it and get into that and jump in and out of some trades, you can do quite well. Again, for me, uh, I just invest. All right, let's go here. We'll have to update this. This is a bit old, 660 billion. Let's see what it's doing. And we can see uh, that the market has generally had a little bit of a pullback over the last hour. All right, 656. So there we go, it's gone down, dropped 4 billion. Gas is uh, pumped up, so 67, that's no good. Bitcoin dominance at 66%. And I expect this to... Uh, sort of keep rising a little bit. I think our altcoin season, even though altcoins have been doing all right, uh, is still a little bit away. And look, XRP, this was 92 cents two weeks ago, and now it's 35 cents. And I think it will continue to drop, unfortunately. I think it's probably going to go, you know, it'll possibly get down to like, you know, less than 10 cents, maybe even two cents or something like that. And that is really disappointing. But, you know, that's the way it goes. You know, I, I will have lost... Uh, a reasonable amount of money from this. I put in, I think maybe 10% uh, of all my earnings were in XRP, uh, and that's probably going to turn into 1%. But again, I'm stubborn, uh, and I'm just going to hold. I'm going to wait to see what happens, because I just have a sneaky suspicion that XRP will come out at the end of this and go absolutely berserk. Could I sell now and get in cheaper? Maybe I could, or maybe it's already hit the hit the bottom, you know, who knows, it's just too hard to tell. For me, I'm still in profit at 35 cents, but really I'm getting pl close to uh, being at a loss. But again, I'm just sticking to my guns. All right, Litecoin, doing well. Again, we've had some sort of pullbacks in the last hour, but look how well things have done over the seven days. All right, who's really pumping? Who's done well? Synthetics Network, uh, quite a tear for the last seven days. Uh, but, you know, Zillica's even outdoing them. Again, 90% uh, Swiss Borg. So, again, this isn't even the real uh, altcoin season, which is the scary thing. That is still yet to come. Celsius Network on an absolute tear. So, well done to them and Alex Mashinsky and all that. So, pumping really hard. Are there so many decent losses? Yep. XRP, of course, going to be leading the way. Stellar really hurting as well. Stellar very similar to XRP, so it uh, doesn't surprise me that if XRP is going to go go down, Stellar is going to go down. Stellar may well find themselves uh, under the scope uh, of uh, the SEC as well, which I suspect is why the price is going down. Uh, and again, so I've put a reasonable amount of money into both of those, and uh, not a reasonable amount into Stellar, a lot more into XRP than Stellar. But again, I'm probably going to lose money on those, and that is disappointing, but... That's the way it goes, you know. I, I lose there, but I win in others. So, you know, you can't win all the time. And again, I'll ride both of those to zero. I just don't care. Uh, Stella has been doing a lot of work with uh, the IMF uh, and central uh, banks and all the rest of it. So, yeah, we'll just wait and see. All right. Last but not least, let's have a look. How's the market doing? So... It pumped up to 23, nearly 24,000. Now we're just hovering around there. We're really having trouble breaking that kind of $24,000 mark. But look, it does keep moving up. Uh, could this sell off and come down lower? Yes, but again, this is now late afternoon here in Australia. So it's about to be early morning. So generally, again, over the nights, uh, this can pull back a little bit. But once you know the day trading starts, this could really start to pump up. But again, we're all waiting to see. No one knows exactly what's going on. All right, let me know what you think down below. Do you think an attack on XRP is an attack on all of crypto? Or are you just happy and you hate XRP uh, and you hope it goes to zero? And I understand that. No, I don't have any issues with people that feel like that. My feelings are different. But hey, we're all entitled to different opinions. But I think in the end, we should all get behind uh, crypto in general uh, and unite but again I understand if people don't want to stay safe be kind to one another hopefully you're on that gain train and I'll see you next time